That's probably something you want to learn about. So that should be on your roadmap to learn the, the structure. And I don't know where you are, are where you are on virtualization, virtual host versus VM guest, and how that relationship works, and what the networking looks like, and all that kind of stuff. But probably some, you know, some basic research on that, and watching some YouTube videos would be helpful on that kind of stuff. Mm hmm. Yep. And it's rare, but it does happen. Backup gets stuck, something like that, you know, and then you can reach out and say, on Razor, backup stuck somewhere. I'm having problems with these servers. Oh, yeah, this one got this, this one's still trying to do a backup. Let me kill that for you. Okay, thanks, man. You know, so you'll learn to skip to that point once you master this stuff. Because once you go through this a couple times, the more you do it, the less you'll have to do it granular. And there's sometimes when there's going to be a really, really tough one to figure out. And you'll have to get down and, and really get into trace routes and, and different times of the day and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, once you figure all this out and get a real deep understanding of the relationships from end to end, then it'll be easier for you to troubleshoot these. Now, we discussed this whole thing with point to internet. Okay. So the next question is, quickly, because we're kind of running long here, but what if they have a VPN, an, M, an MPLS, or a Metro E? You know, same thing. You, you really want to troubleshoot the same thing. The only difference is going to be that this part right here isn't going to be out over the internet. It's going to be directly here. Now, it's still going over the internet, but as far as troubleshooting it goes, pinging it, trace routes, and things like that, you're not going to see all of this. You're going to only see this part. So if you do a ping trace route here and it's 100 plus milliseconds, then there's a problem with the Metro E, and that's something you've got to get on with the engineering team. But again, you've done your research, right? You've established it's not a local issue. You've established it's not a server issue. There's a problem here, and you take that information to those guys, right? And, and you've accelerated their, their remediation time as well. So you made their job easier, they're going to welcome you with open arms. They're going to say, great job, man. You know, give me, give me some more of that. So that will be the only difference between these. And there's, there's some subtle differences between these that we won't go over right now. So let's take a look at the tool real quick. Not the tool, but the, the form. What's going on with this thing? Did it go to sleep? Do you know where that form is on the network? Oh, hand or? Well, I got it right here, but I was going to do it on the local. So, you know about the toolbox on your on the SIs when you're doing an SI? The one that pops up whenever you open the ticket? No, no, no. See this this toolkit right here? This is the same thing. When you open up an SI service interaction, on the bottom left hand side is a toolkit, and what that is is a it's a bunch of common links that we've set up to of tools to give you guys, you know, default ones that, that we use. Uh, let's see, okay, there's a data tech one. Scott's laptop. I don't know why these people can't. Um, Scott did that himself. I'm, I'm proud that he did that. Can't and select that. I, I gave him the work. Okay, nobody's been here. Good. Um, okay, so, yeah, that's progress, right? People are actually creating an internal ticket. And hopefully Baron got it. So down here on the bottom left is the support toolkit. So these are some common links. Um, DP ISSL. Here's your host IP monitor to download it, right? Um, internet speed test. You know links to all that kind of stuff. And then there is the ISP performance test. This should open up the document. And we're trying to make it really easy for you guys by giving you links to this stuff and not having to look for it. Oh, it's internal. Oh, but you know it's using Docman Web. That's why. Yeah, it's gonna it's sandboxing it right now. Can't read that. All right. Well, let me. Uh, 
the deck. Oh, there it is. OK. OK. So you want to go view, edit. And the first thing you want to do is file save as to that customer in their, in their directory. You know, you know where the customer's directory are under I, you know, type thing? Okay. So this basically walks you through all the information that we want to record. And it's not just for us, not just for you, but it's for the customer to show them the work that we've done to troubleshoot this issue. And it's for the engineering team as well, right? So that's why you have these three different boxes, kind of guide you right through it. What's their local IP address? There's your you know, ping. There's the um, ping plotter. All right, so you go through that. But let's just open up a couple. So I'm going to ping google.com dash t. And also, if you're doing this, you say, Sue, let me get on your workstation. Do it. Do a couple of these. Ping. 192.168, no, yeah, 192.168.1.1, right, dash T. There's our local router. And then I will ping actually our core router. Now, if I knew the name or an IP of a, of a workstation across the network, I might want to add that one. Yeah, I'll add yours. What is yours? Right. Now, I'm monitoring the four most important key points Across the network. So I just let that thing do a baseline and gather what my averages are. And I can see, you know, our router is going to do this. That's one thing you got to know is a nuance. Our core router all of a sudden will do this. That's just because it does its own internal monitoring. So as long as it's not consistently high, it's okay. See, most of the time it's one millisecond. Across my network, one millisecond, one millisecond. Out to uh, Google, it's going to be a little erratic, but you'll see that the, my most the highest yeah. one is 14 milliseconds. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Really but now the test. So what I want to do now is go out to Speakeasy. Speakeasy.net forward slash test. See if these numbers change. Nope. He's doing a download right now, and you see it's not really affecting my connection, right? If you do this on most customer networks, especially the ones that have Verizon or cable modem or something, you're going to see some blips. If they have a really bad internet connection, then those numbers will go through the roof, and you might even get some timeouts. So what you do is, okay, you know that's going on. You get ready. You get your snippet ready, and you do. Bam, let me capture that. Now we say, look, I was doing a speed test, and now look at what your pings are, ping times are, Mr. Customer. Now, if they all show up great like this, then you know you've got perfect connection from the client's workstation, through their switch, through the router, out to the internet. You're solid right here. You'll want to do this same thing from the server, by the way. Ping the local router, ping the internet, Maybe ping another server if you have access to it, and then do a download test and see if they're, you know, you're, you're, that's a performance test versus a speed test, right? Because this right here is, puts, a, puts a load on the line. So now, now it's a true performance test. So you want to do it on a server, too. Don't just take for granted that our servers aren't having any problems or our local network isn't. You verify both ends that everything's good, and then you know it's somewhere in the middle. Then you can start your trace routes. Yeah. I mean, it could go in one way and out the other. I've seen that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, all right, that all makes sense so far. Now, if you're doing this on Sue's desktop while she's watching, you're blowing her mind. She's like, wow, look at all that cool shit. I mean, and there's nothing more basic than a ping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that goes back to, you know, the Novell days of running coax cable. But 
it, you're, you're showing the customer live what their network is doing under the hood, you know, down to the OSI level-ish type stuff. And they really like that. Then you can say, well, look, you know, Sue, your local network is fine. You know, your, your ping here, this one right here, up in the top right, to your local router, that's good. Your ping here across to Nick's computer is good. Um, but when I do a speed test, your ping to Google and the ping to our data center both goes up to 100 milliseconds. So that shows the customer that it's not the data center only. It's even going just out to the internet, which means that it's their point to internet that's the problem. It's not our data center, right? So, th and that brings up a great point. Let's go back to this customer, and let's say that, you know, I couldn't really figure it out. It's kind of random, or it seems like it's random, and, and the customer doesn't have any answers. So you deploy the host monitor, and you ping every device on their network, and you'll notice that these four devices are slow. Everything else seems good, but these four computers is coming back to 100, 120, 150 milliseconds, and you say, well, w w what are these devices? So you go and can say it, and you look, and it'll tell you, well, these four devices are notebooks. What are no notebooks famously connected? Wireless, right? Say, so you know what? You got a Wi-Fi issue. 